It's summertime. Get that beach body ready for some fun in the sun and to kick some monster booty. To be perfectly honest, Raftalia in a swimsuit is all I need in my life right now. Can we just end season one right here? What's up? It's Truth Hero and justice. Sweet justice has been served. We can all rest now. The only waves we have to concern ourselves with are from the ocean. Well, for now. So let's all relax and explore Calmira Archipelago together. And as always, land of spoilers ho! The next stop for our heroes is the Calmira Island or Archipelago, which every 10 years activates a phenomena giving boosted experience for defeating enemies, and where adventurers flock to reap these rewards. Aha, Calmira, where you can kill the protagonist from that time I got reincarnated as a slime, just for some experience points. That's right. Shield hero best isekai? Nah, Philo is right. Killing simple slime monsters isn't really a challenge, and what we'll be discussing in relation to Calmira is a lot more serious than simple level ups and hashtag beach vibes. Besides, level ain't everything. If you were wondering, gee, will the heroes ever cooperate with Naofumi and put aside their pride, arrogance, and self-righteousness? The answer is no. And this trip to Calmira serves as a foreshadowing into each of the three idiot heroes' character vices and their fates later on in the series. On this expedition to grind levels, it's time to separate the men from the boys. And strong women, of course. But even before the three dimwits arrive at the aisle, they all get seasick. Some heroes. <laughs> it's no wonder later that La Arkberg doesn't believe they are actually the cardinal heroes. I mean, who would? Side note, I will be doing a separate video on both Larkberg and Rishia, as well as the philosophy behind their characters. Stay tuned. Let's start with all three of them collectively. Despite meeting with the Queen and getting royally admonished, they still believe this is all just a game. There is simply no way Naofumi unlocked the Rage Shield and Curse series without cheating. Their philosophy on always having a simple explanation like in a video game stays the same when Naofumi unlocks a stat boost by reading and translating a stone tablet. When pressed, Naofumi honestly answers, I studied. I actually took the time to read paper pages. Maybe you should too. But no, why would we ever bother to learn this isekai world's foreign languages? <laughs> There's gotta be an easier way. This arrogance in seeking strength speaks to a major blind spot that the three idiot heroes have which is putting too much value on level and standard video game-esque advancements made with their weapons. They don't value real field experience, and as such, fail continuously. While Naofumi might be an absolute noob when it comes to enemy drops, weapon rarity, and crafting, sometimes there's more to games and real life than just what's in the manual. Ren's Pride Speaking of games, the player who loves to always go it alone RPG style is Ren Amaki and his knowledge of games yet lack of street smarts really shows in these episodes. Before coming to Calmira, he leaves without his party, and Naofumi learns that Ren's party members actually train separately from him. On the island, things are no different. Ren is so prideful that he can't admit to the fact that he can't swim, and would rather just not participate in his duty as a hero than to conquer his fear of water. Luckily, Motoyasu and Itsuki actually do something useful for once, and toss Sword Boy into the ocean, making Ren come around to the idea of wearing penguin diving gear while swimming. Huh, <laughs> lame. If only Ren had set aside his pride in the future, as later he believes he is powerful enough to go it alone, and this leads his entire party into disaster, with Ren unlocking two curse series because he can't admit he wasn't strong enough by himself. Motoyasu's Ignorance Surprisingly, Motoyasu is actually pretty normal and level-headed in this island arc. Besides displaying ignorance like the rest of the three idiots at the meeting and with the stone tablet, he really doesn't do anything too dumb on Calmira. He's, of course, off chasing girls in the city market, but, eh, what else is new? Motoyasu will have to learn how to control his lust, as this will come back to bite and curse him in the end. Also, lesser known fact, Motoyasu actually arrived in this isekai world because he was killed over jealousy surrounding a girl. And yet he keeps on flirting. Motoyasu's biggest flaw is his ignorance. He doesn't learn from his mistakes and doesn't think for himself, doesn't look at things objectively, even when the evidence is painfully obvious. 
It's Suki's self-righteousness. Oh, I hate this little social justice warrior so much. The last idiot has the most foreshadowing here in his self-righteousness and belief that he is the most just man. Mauled rather enthusiastically explains that Itsuki's party has a hierarchy. <clears throat> Cult vibes of who is most useful to the illustrious bow hero. This places Itsuki-sama at the top as the king of heroics and justice. Relax Mauled, your boyfriend ain't that special. Also, this self-righteous belief is what leads to Risha being at the bottom of the hierarchy and wanting to later kill herself for losing Itsuki's favor. Again, I'll be doing a separate video on this and the philosophy surrounding Itsuki and Rishia's relationship. Blinded by this sense of justice and righteousness, Itsuki believes he's truly God's gift to the world, and that people should worship him for this sense of justice, and for just being a cardinal hero, that they should almost be indebted to him because he saved their lives. Kinda like how Rishia is. Seriously, what anime am I watching? Shield Hero or Death Note? Believing he is so just and righteous as a hero, and that everyone can't wait to be saved by him, he violates the moral code on Kalmira. Not everyone wants to be helped, especially adventurers intentionally seeking out danger to improve their skills. But hey, now Fumi having to clean up after Itsuki's mess? Eh, again. What else is new? This unbridled self-righteousness eventually leads Itsuki to being betrayed by Mauled and Mine. Uh, er, bitchy, and him not only becoming more egotistical, but also facing a full-scale rebellion from the people he exploited. On Kalmira, you truly reap what you sow. Ultimately, the sword, spear, and bow all suffer from some degree of pride, ignorance, and self-righteousness, but by not realizing their initial dispositions, these small cases of vice on Kalmira are later engorged for the three idiot heroes. What can I say? Foreshadowing. And I can't wait to cover all the curse series when they happen. But until then, you can catch me catching rays. And some fish. So what did we learn on this trip? Well, don't let your pride get in the way. Read a book for once. And whatever you do, don't be this guy. You're fucking a white male! Thank you for touring with Truth Hero Travels. Who out of the three idiot heroes is the most screwed for the future? But more importantly, Who's best bikini girl? Comment below, and punch your ticket for more adventure by subscribing. And as always, keep it tuned here for more Rising of the Shield Hero content.